I thought you might be interested in the operation of a typical pickup goods train on my railway. First thing I do is to print out the manifest from the computer program that handles all the freight movements on my railway and then I select the wagon destination boards. Uh, these have been printed onto steel so that they can be attached to the wagons with magnets. Once all the wagons that need to be moved have been marked up, they're shunted and here we see the train ready for departure. Uh, it's being hauled by Manning Wardle, loco number 6, Hart Hill, an 060 semi scratch built loco on a Pico chassis. Now normally I wouldn't engage in any shunting at Peckforton as the pickup goods goes down the line. Uh, I would wait until it came back up the line because otherwise, as you can see, I need to do some reverse shunting. However, the manifest required me to deliver an empty timber wagon from Peckforton to Bickerton, which is further down the line and so some reverse shunting was required. Here we see the train departing. And here we see the train arriving at Bickerton, the furthermost terminus of the railway. Most of the wagons that are in the train are destined for the station and some wagons needed to be picked up as well. So after a bit of shunting, the train was made ready for departure. However, it had to wait until the down midday passenger arrived. And here the train arrives at Bukley. It's actually arriving on the wrong road, on the down road of the island platform. Reason being that in the last delivery of freight, there were too many wagons to fit onto the siding and so they overspilled onto the up road. So there was a bit of nifty reverse shunting required uh, and eventually managed to clear the siding deliver the wagons that needed to be delivered from both Beeston and Bickerton and eventually the train was made up ready for departure. Before it can depart however it has to be passed by the up passenger train which again pulls in on the wrong road before departing again. Once it's left and has cleared the section ahead, the goods train can depart following it up the line. Just outside Bukley Station, the train crosses the swing bridge. 
This is based on the original swing bridge uh, on the South World Railway. There wouldn't really have been a swing bridge on my railway, uh, but I had to bridge the gap leading up to the sheds and this seemed like a, a pretty good way of doing it. Here we are arriving back at Peckforton. Now you wouldn't have thought I would need to do any more shunting here as I'd already done it as the train went down the line, but the manifest required me to deliver a wagon from Bickerton to the mill siding and so this required the train to run into Peckforton so I could run round it, uh, detach the wagon that was required and then run back down the line to the mill siding where it could be reverse shunted up into it. That's one of the beauties of the computer program. It sometimes throws up movements I wouldn't normally have considered. After delivering the wagon to the mill, the loco then goes back up the line, joins the rest of the up pickup goods, which now departs up the line towards Beeston Castle, crossing the River Gowie on the way. At Beeston Castle, a couple of wagons needed to be delivered, one from Beeston Market up the line and the other from Bukeley further down the line. After the shunting had taken place, the loco waited with its train for the down passenger to pass it. And once the down passenger had cleared the next section, the freight train could depart. Having delivered all its wagons and carried out its shunting duties, the train now made its way back up towards Beeston Market Station, where, once it had run round its train and shunted its wagons, the loco could be put to bed. <laughs>